This is Andy Purawal for Boxing News. I'm joined by Matt Macklin here in Birmingham. Matt, you must be feeling the same as me. It's nice to have a show close to home. Oh, isn't it just, you know, you get this done and you go home as opposed to back to the hotel where it's all right in the hotel, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I'm uh, absolutely. So uh, hopefully the show is a massive success and uh, this, this could be a regular thing because you look at Ben Whitaker, I know he's Wolverhampton and Fraser Clark, Burton, but if you look, you know, the West Midlands is both what, 30, 40 minutes, you know, so very accessible and uh, especially the resorts world as well and all the hotels on site and the casino, etc. cetera. You, you, you could see this becoming a really uh, big venue if all these guys can keep winning. Matt Bowatsi Steppen, uh, Josh Bowatsi's first fight back with Sky after leaving Matchroom, but I've known a new promotional banner as well in Boxer. Not the fight I think many would have expected. Callum Smith had critics when he was lined up to face Steppen. So for Josh Bowatsi now, what are you expecting from him in this fight? Well, look, he's a year out. Uh, a change of promotional team. Um, and I think he just needs to... Yeah, look, it's probably... not. Not the fight we wanted to see, but it's, it's you know, Callum Smith was going to fight him, so he's undefeated, decent amateur, so he's credible. Uh, Josh should win and should look good doing so. Um, so that's what we want to see. Um, just just glad that he's back in action. He's, he, he's a guy really that should have been a world champion by now. Certainly should have fought for one by now anyway, whether or not he wins it. But he should, he should have been in a position to have fought for a world title by now. Um, and hopefully... Uh, he comes through Saturday night unscathed and then can, you know, get out again ASAP and get some momentum in his career because the, the, the talent's there, the ability's there. I, I feel like the worth it, work ethic is there. Um, but it's been a bit of a slow burner. It just hasn't, it's just fizzled out a little bit, his career has, so it needs, he needs to reignite it now, reignite the fire and, um, and get moving. The first ever female British title on the line between Lauren Price and Katie Bavington. Uh, Katie Kirsty Bavington, sorry. Um, yeah, talk about this fight, Matt. Lauren, a big favourite. Kirsty's as game as anything will come to win, as she said. What are you expecting? Uh, I think I think she'll bring the best out of Lauren because of Lauren's more, you know, more of a boxer, you know, counter puncher, boxer, mover. I think she'll be better against aggressive opponents. So I think, uh, yeah, Kirsty may, may just well do that, bring the best out of her. The return of Ben Whitaker, um, a lot of time outside of a ring. There's always expectation on his shoulders when he turned over. How important is it that he, he really gets people talking about him again on Saturday? Not, not just wins, but he needs to make a statement again. Yeah, well, there's, there's big expectations for a reason. He was such a decorated amateur, uh, had a fantastic Olympic Games. where he got the silver medal and, you know, he was carrying injury as well. So we know his ability is top draw. He's just got to transition that now into the professional ranks. And unfortunately, you know, the Olympics were a while ago now. It's, he hasn't really moved as quickly as we would have liked. But sometimes things happen that are out of your control, injuries being one of them. So, um, yeah, hopefully he, he gets his career moving again on Saturday night. And obviously, if it's a scintillating performance like the one in Bournemouth, then obviously people are going to be uh, getting excited. What are you hoping to see on Saturday night? I know you've just said it's scintillating performance, but anything in particular you're looking out for from Ben? Um, yeah, probably just to maybe sit down on his shots a bit more. We know he's got the flashy skills and the, the very good elusive uh, movement, great defence. I want to see him put some hurt on his opponents, really, maybe. Not every shot. You've got to dress it up and box and you know, bag the rounds. But every now and then I want to see him sit down and really you know, turn a shot over. Um, just away from his card, Matt, always a few other topics to touch on. Eubank Jr., sorry, Smith, Eubank Jr. too, obviously officially announced the other week. A lot of people think that we'll see a similar type of outcome to the first fight. Do you think the same? I th I, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I think the, the, probably the best thing Eubank's had in his career was his chin and his fitness, his durability, really. Um, now, you know, may, maybe his punch resistance has gone. You know, if it has, then I think it'll be the same. Um, Liam now knows at middle, middleweight, he knows he can hurt Eubank. So, you know, he, when he gets hard and brutal in there, you know, he's going he's gonna to dig in even more. Um, I think Eubank made a mistake trying to box Liam. I, th I thought, going into that fight, I thought, you know, I picked Liam 
But I thought if Eubank comes out and has a fight from the first bell, then it, you know, maybe the physical size, etc., could, uh, and maybe a bit of freshness could sway him. But, um, you know, Liam now, Liam has, he didn't knock him out, but, you know, he stopped him. He, you know, badly hurt him. And uh, I, think, I think Liam's confidence will be even higher now. And uh, I know Eubank will never show it out, but there'll be doubt there now. How do you come past that? If there's doubt in your mind, how do you come past that when you step between ropes? You look up, look at, across the ring and see the man who's just stopped you in such, such convincing and devastating fashion. Is there a way to mentally get past that? Well, you just don't know, do you, till you're in there? I mean, you see a lot of fighters um, that get stopped or knocked out and they can go a little bit gun shy. And then you see other fighters that get knocked out and it, and it doesn't affect them at all. They're just straight back to how they were. So it all, it all depends. Um, I don't, Eubank, I think he's, you know, his career's on the line really. So I think he'll, uh, I think he'll, I, I think he'll come out all guns blazing. I would imagine. I don't think he'll. I'd be surprised if he was gun shy, but you never know. Saying the word gun shy, there, it's obviously one which people have somewhat started to suggest around Anthony Joshua. I don't know if you saw the article or not, but a certain Thomas Howe, a very respected um, reporter throughout the years working in boxing, said that he feels that it's time, the time is right for AJ to step away from the sport now. What were your thoughts on what he wrote? Yeah, I mean, it, it was hard to... Some people thought it was a bit harsh. Um, but sometimes the reality and truth is a bit harsh. Um, do I agree with it? I don't know. I agree with some of it. Um, it's certainly one way of looking at it. Um, but then, you know, there are big fights out there for him. And if he has still got the hunger, if the appetite is still there to go in and train hard and get through those weeks and, and, and you know, and, and, and take these fights, you know, then good luck to him. Um, you know, if, if the Wilder fight happens in December... I think it'll be make or break because I think he'll either win by knockout or he'll get knocked out, and then I think you know that'll if he gets if he if he was to get knocked out, I think that would be the end of it. Don't get me wrong; there's been no indication that AJ's got any motive to retire from the sport. But listening to your comments, would you be understanding if, for whatever reason, he decided to call it a day? Well, he's got nothing left to prove, you know. In, in really, he look, he's you know he's, he's achieved amazing things. He's earned. You know, generational money that his grandkids will be living off. So he's he's done all right, hasn't he? You know, he's done he's done well, and um, yeah, he's had a, he's had a great career. So you know, and, and, it, and boxing's tough, and so I don't know. It just depends what what the appetite's like. You, you know, it's hard to walk away, I guess, from millions and millions of pounds, uh, and and the big and the big nights, not just the money, but the, the big occasion and everything that goes with it. Um, but it's, a tough, but it's a tough game, boxing. You know, it's it's and it's, you know, it's not it's not great for our health. So uh, there does come a day when you have to look at make that decision. And um, Thomas House's opinion was that maybe it should be now. And I, I see where he's coming from. Um, that said, I think there's a lot of money on the table to fight Wilder. And and I guess he thinks well, you know, if I, if I knock Wilder out, I beat Wilder. I knock, I'm back in there, you know, Fury be too sick, me and Fury can do it, so, yeah. It, look, it's, it's his personal decision. Uh, Matt, just away from that, obviously, a few fights on the horizon, Taylor Cameron, May 20th, what goes down? Look, I think Casey Taylor's, um, she's the, the quote, isn't she, her, her and Clarissa, the, 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 there's, you can argue it either way, but um, I think... Uh, you know, she's she, again. She's she's had a long, tough, hard career. Because you know, how many amateur fights did she have? Must have been in the hundreds. Um, tournament after tournament after tournament. Um, it, it, it's the training as well. And uh, you know, she as, as well. You've just got biology as well. You know, she isn't she isn't a spring chicken anymore, Katie. And the Serrano fight was a tough fight. And there is miles on the clock. The, the Pursuit fight was a brutal fight. So um, you know. So Cameron's the fresher, but I think Katie, as long as she's still where she was, then I think she'll she'll have enough left in the, in the tank. Haney Lomachenko during the night, one which is divided opinion, but which way are you sitting? Uh, listen, I think uh, I think I think I still favour Lomachenko. What makes you say that? He's a genius, you know. He's a genius, and um, I think he'll just know a bit too much.
this weekend. A tough ask for John Ryder out in Mexico against Canelo Alvarez. A lot of people have made a point of if he was to go to the scoring and what have you. If you're in John Ryder's shoes, how do you attempt to defeat Canelo? Well, look, John will have his game plan, his tactics with his long-time trainer, Tony Sims. I think, I think in John Ryder, you've, got to have, you've probably got one of the most um, sort of unassuming, underrated fighters out there. He, um, I don't think anyone has ever had an easy night with John Ryder. He's very, uh, very economical, got very good defence, uh, good judge of distance. It, it, because he doesn't really do anything flashy, he's very easy to sort of overlook. But he's a proven top-notch fighter, you know. And uh, you know, if, you know, if Canelo overlooks him, stranger things have happened. Well, right, Matt, we'll leave that there now because I know you're on fatherly duties and you've brought your child with you today, so I don't want to take you away from your family for too long. So thank you. Oh, so well, cheers. cheers.